So I guess we can continue. Our uh, next speaker is uh, Omri Ben Azir. I hope I pronounced the second part more or less uh, correctly, the second part of your surname, uh, who is um, uh, uh, a former student of Nogalon or a student that is about to graduate and uh, uh, who is uh, uh, who has moved to Harvard recently. And he will talk about some of his uh, recent work uh, on adversarially uh, robust streaming algorithms. Thank you very much for the introduction. So um, this uh, talk will be based on several joint works with uh, Noga Alon, Yuval Dagan, Rajesh Jairam, Shai, Mora Shai Moran, Moni Naor, David Rudraff, and Elon Yogev. So let me start by introducing classical streaming algorithms. So these are algorithms that are uh, useful in analyzing and processing very large data sets. So suppose that you have, let's say, a network router that uh, receives millions of packets per second, and uh, the router needs to optimize internet traffic in some way, or suppose you have a Google database that um, communicates with users, so users can send or receive data, can ask some queries about the data, and so on. So this is the kind of situation where uh, streaming algorithms are very useful. And one typically thinks of a streaming algorithm as some processor that sees a continuous stream of, of data elements, and it keeps some uh, synopsis of the stream in its memory, and it provides some output, maybe in, maybe in response to user queries, maybe an unconditional output, but this is a streaming algorithm. And in this talk, uh, we formally discuss tracking algorithms, which are streaming algorithms that uh, continuously return some kind of output. So uh, let us fix some function f, which is the function that the algorithm will compute, and an error parameter epsilon. So we will typically want to approximate the function, not to compute it. The model is that um, elements and from the stream appear one by one. First, if x1 appear, appears and is analyzed, then x2, and so on. And the requirement that we have is that the algorithm should output some value rt, which is, um, with high probability, a good approximation of the output of the function over the stream elements up until now, over the first t stream elements. Okay, so let's take maybe a closer look at uh, this model. Let's consider. Um, okay, so so let's let's consider the the t step of uh, of the stream. So we send some element x t to the algorithm, and then the algorithm provides some output r t, and then in the next round we send another element to the algorithm, and it provides another output and so on. And in, in streaming algorithms in, in, in the large majority of the literature assumes that uh, streams are fixed in advance. Uh, wh what do I mean by that? I mean that um, when we submit a element x t plus one, it does not depend on previous outputs. So uh, the, the statements are typically, well, they, they are implicitly uh, stating uh, typically that for any stream of elements x1 up to xn, so and so happens. But, okay, so, so we don't have this kind of connections where previous outputs 
uh, affect uh, new inputs to the algorithm in any way. But if if you think about it uh, for a moment, this, this is not very realistic in many scenarios. So suppose, consider for example, you have an autonomous vehicle that uh, makes decision uh, within its environment. And okay, and once the vehicle makes a decision, the environment responds in some way. So for example, if there's a pedestrian uh, uh, that interacts with the vehicle in some way, then the actions that the, that the, that the car will make will uh, affect what the pedestrian will do. And then um, the, next, the next decision that the vehicle will make will depend on what the environment does. So it's unrealistic to assume that the input that the vehicle provides to the environment, uh, the type of decision it makes, does not depend on any of the previous, um, of the previous uh, actions that the environment uh, has taken. So this is kind of an adaptive situation and, and, uh, and there are many natural situations where it is just unrealistic to assume that data is fixed in advance. So in, in this case, data is the, the set of decisions. Um, so for example, when you buy an item in, let's say in Amazon, then uh, each time you buy an item, then the next set of items that are offered to you depend on the items that you bought. So the next item that you will buy will depend on, on outputs of, of Amazon. It will depend on what Amazon is offering you, obviously. Um, so, so again, the, the stream of items that uh, you wish to buy is not fixed in advance. It depends on, on what is offered to you in this case. There are also some many other situations. For example, if uh, an attacker wants to, to run, run some uh, attack on, on, on a network device, then First, the attacker might want to study what the network output, the network device outputs, and only then uh, choose the course of action. So, um, and, and this is also kind of an adaptive uh, uh, stream. So, the assumption that a stream of data is fixed in advance is just just uh, doesn't hold water in, in many cases. And it's it's actually true even when there is no adversary and no adaptivity. It's actually also uh, interesting to, to consider more, more robust more uh, more robust models that, that might work in kind of an adversarial setting even in more classical settings for example uh, when people work with uh, when people try to analyze uh, dynamic graph algorithms or uh, problems in clustering so so these kind of problems that uh, that uh, we don't we cannot assume that we don't do not want to assume a stream to be fixed in advance this kind of problem is also common in the analysis of classical algorithms. So in this talk, I would like to, to discuss um, what happens when, uh, uh, for, for streaming algorithms when, when the stream is chosen adversarially. So let's start by defining the model. Um, so basically, um, the, the, there is an adversary that uh, controls stream updates. After it sees uh, uh, the output, the the output for step t, the adversary gets to choose um, the next element, the next input that uh, it will provide to the algorithm. And surprisingly, very little is known for streaming algorithms. In this case, even even though this this kind of model is natural and and seems to be important in many cases. So this talk will uh, in this talk I will, I will present the model. I will give some very, I would say, give some very preliminary results on this model, but there are many, uh, many directions for research and many open questions that one could think about. So um, I think my, my main goal today is to just to convince you that this is an interesting model and, and, uh, and uh, that uh, you might want to work on, on uh, might, might want to think about uh, problems in this model. Okay, so um, the model is as follows. The, there's a, there are two players, an adversary and an algorithm. And in each round, the adversary sends some element, some uh, element that is uh, part of the stream. And then since we are looking at tracking algorithms, uh, the algorithm immediately provides some response, which is the output of the algorithm on all of the elements until now. So, 
we've seen now one round of the algorithm where the adversary sent an element and got a response, and now the adversary stores the response. Now the next element that the adversary will send may depend in the response, may, may, may depend on the response in some way. It may also depend on other parameters, for example, on, on the previous elements that the adversary sent. So uh, again, we, we get another output and, and the adversary can store it and so on. So this, this goes on and on. Um, and okay, so uh, we, said, uh, we said before that uh, when discussing tracking algorithms, that we want the output of the algorithm to be approximately correct, to be an approximation, a good approximation of the value of the function on, on all of the elements that we've seen until now at any given point in, in time. Uh, so the goal of the adversary will, will be the contrapositive form of that. The adversary would want that at some point in time, uh, the output will not be a good approximation of uh, the value of the function. So this is the goal of the adversary in our game. And we will generally assume that the adversary is very strong. It has unbounded computation, computational power. We do not care about running time of, of uh, procedures that the adversary uh, runs. We assume that the adversary knows all of the outputs it has seen until now, and also all of the elements that it uh, previously sent. So we assume that it is very strong. And we want algorithms that work even in the, pres even in the presence of such an adversary. So, so the problem is that adversary might learn the randomness that's uh, chosen by our algorithm. So we suppose that you run, so many streaming algorithms, for example, use hash functions. If you have an adversary that learns the randomness of the hash function and, and, and manage to exploit the algorithm in some way because of this, we are in a problem. So we, are, we, we, we would like to develop algorithms where learning the randomness of the algorithm uh, is either not possible or cannot be exploited in order to, to attack it in some way, in order to, to make the, the function computation uh, uh, incorrect. Okay, so are there any questions about the model? I have a small question actually. So uh, this uh, um, RT uh, not equal to F of XT, uh, so when you write this up to uh, error epsilon, so can you specify what exactly do you mean by that? Good, so there are multiple definitions depend on the problem, but um, uh, okay, so in, in, we, we will see actually two definitions in this talk. Okay. One definition is that you have the, the function uh, that is returned is, uh, the, the, the value that is returned is just a real number. And then in this case, we would want a one plus epsilon a multiplicative approximation. Um, we will all, we'll also see results that are uh, where the, the, the output is not a real number, and then we will see some other notion of, of approximation, which is more natural for that kind of problems. And also maybe another question, maybe too premature, but still. So uh, the function uh, and the response are really just the function of uh, uh, xt, or it's a function of the first t entries somehow? So you're uh, uh, so, yeah, it is, are you asking whether it depends also on the order of the elements that were submitted? Uh, not on the order, but uh, uh, the uh, responses and the function, they depend uh, on all, uh, so the types of functions that you look at, they depend on all the inputs or just on the, I guess on the, on, on all the inputs, right? This is what- uh, so, so we want the value of the function, we want, the, so the output that you are seeking at given at time t is only, the output on the first t, t elements yeah. in this case because the algorithm never saw the other elements it can't return anything yeah i mean but i meant that they depend on all the first t not uh... yeah typically, okay. typically okay. they do so for example yeah so so for example uh, think about uh, uh, the function of the number of different elements in the stream it's actually an interesting stream problem to uh, to compute the number of, of distinct elements in the stream not the, not the total number, not, not t, not the total number of elements in the stream at any given time, but the number of distinct ones. Okay. Um, so you, you could you could use it as a running example. We will, so we will see another running example um, that could be useful to, to think about. Um, 
Okay, so um, given this kind of definition, the first uh, question that one may ask is whether string algorithms that work in the classical setting, whether they are always robust um, in, the, in the adversarial setting. So, okay, so typically uh, algorithms in the streaming literature are either considered randomized algorithms or deterministic ones. And deterministic algorithms always work. They don't have, uh, they don't, do not depend on, on, on how the stream was constructed. They always work even if the stream is, is adversarial. The problem with deterministic algorithms is that in many problems that are just efficient deterministic algorithms just do not exist. So one, one interesting example is uh, computing the L2 norm of, uh, of the vector of elements that we've seen until now, um, or computing the number of collisions between elements that we've seen until now. Um, a very famous result by Alon Matthias and Segedi shows that if you want, if uh, the approximation factor epsilon is a constant, let's say, um, then you have a huge separation between randomized algorithms where you only need a logarithmic amount of space in order to compute the L2 norm uh, versus the deterministic case where you basically do not have any sublinear space uh, algorithm. So there is an exponential improvement if you can uh, use randomization. Um, and this is actually common, common in many problems in streaming. And um, unfortunately, the, the algorithm by, uh, by Elon Matthias and Segedi is not adversarially robust. It works uh, for streams that are fixed in advance, but we were able to show that it is not, uh, it does not work properly against an adversary. So we might have some problems. Some known algorithms are not robust. And as we said, so if, if we have an algorithm that for example, uses use some uh, simple hash function and uh, uh, this hash function can be learned and exploited in some way, then it, it, it might make the algorithm non-robust. But actually for many, for many algorithms that uh, are known in, in the literature, it's not, it's not that easy to understand whether they are robust or not. It might also depend on the parameters of the problem or uh, on other factors. Um, and before I start with any results, so I think that the, the main take home message from, from this talk is that there is this adversarial model. It is interesting and wasn't investigated much. So there are lots of open questions. Um, so, so let me, before going into any of the results that we, we do know, let me start with one open problem, which I think is very interesting and very fundamental. Is there a, is there a function which is easy to compute uh, in the classical setting, by which I mean that if you can assume that a stream is fixed in advance, uh, is there an algorithm that only uses a polylogarithmic space, but hard for robust streaming algorithms, by which I mean that if you cannot assume the stream to be fixed in advance, if the stream can be chosen in, in this adversarial model, we, we, we must use a polynomial amount of space. So does there exist a function for which we have this kind of separation? We don't know and we don't have a, we don't even have a good guess uh, whether this should be true or not. Okay, so um, this was the model and uh, a few words about the model. Uh, in the second part of the talk, I will, uh, talk, uh, I will uh, say a few words about some results uh, on the model that we do know. Um, So um, yeah, so the, the first, uh, so first I will very briefly go over results um, uh, on transforming uh, algorithms that work in the static setting to algorithms that work um, against, an, uh, against an adversary in the adversarial model. So this is a, this is joint work with uh, Rajesh Jairam, David Rudroff and Elon Yogev. Um, and in, this, in the next part, I'll talk about sampling and about the uh, um, results that are 
somewhat more related to, to, to the rest of this workshop, I guess. So here we'll only go very briefly um, on the results. Um, so we developed two methods that, uh, uh, two generic methods to, uh, that uh, are able to transform streaming algorithms that work in the static setting into algorithms that work in the adversarial setting. Uh, and they have some small, some some uh, overhead in terms of the amount of space they use, but in many cases this this overhead is quite small. So, um, so let, let's see uh, uh, concretely what are the results. So there are two techniques: uh, they're called the scat switching and computation passes. Um, in if, in a few words, what the uh, sketch switching does is it we run uh, many copies of, uh, of the original algorithm and we switch between them so that the adversary will, will not be able to exploit the, the output of any of them. And in the computation passes uh, technique, we actually run just one copy of the algorithm, but we make sure that it works, that it, it is like almost deterministic in the sense that its error probability is very, very small. And this is also something that uh, is hard for an adversary to exploit. Now, one, one key definition that seems to be very important uh, uh, here, and actually we, we also believe it's, it might be, uh, um, it, it, this kind of definition might be relevant in many, in many problems with uh, adversarial robustness, is, uh, so, so the definition is the flip number. And informally, we say that uh, the flip number of a function, um, uh, of, of a function uh, whose, uh, uh, whose range is, 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 is there is, is uh, the maximum over all possible uh, combination, over all possible streams uh, of the number of times the, the, the value of the function changes significantly, changes by a multiplicative factor of one plus epsilon after, uh, during the, the progress of the stream. So this is the flip number. Flip number says how, how, many, how many times uh, the value of the function changes, changes by a lot. And the techniques that we have give that, um, for any, for, any, for any problem, for any function where we have a streaming algorithm that works under the assumption that the stream is fixed in advance, uh, there is an adversarially robust algorithm that works with the same space times the flip number of the problem. And now there are many problems in streaming that uh, where the flip number is, is, is small, it depends on the, it's polynomial in epsilon and uh, and in log n, and then given a, a static algorithm, we get, given an efficient static algorithm, we get an efficient adversarial algorithm. And this is in sharp contrast to, to the deterministic case. So we've seen, for example, so in many of the problems that we, we see here, counting the number of distinct elements in the stream or norm estimation, heavy heaters. Um, so in many of these problems, there are no efficient uh, deterministic streaming algorithms. The, for most of them, the, there's no deterministic algorithm that uses space that is less than n. Or in some, in some of the problems, the, the bound is square root of n. But anyway, in, in, in all cases, the deterministic space complexity is polynomial in n. But it turns out that for all of these problems, um, the adversarially robust space complexity is exponentially better. So, it's much closer to the randomized uh, space complexity. Okay, so, so th these, are, these are actually very basic techniques um, and uh, one might wonder whether they're optimal. So yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't go into much detail into how the techniques look like, but um, they're very simple and um, one, one might wonder whether the better generic transformations from randomized algorithms to robust ones. So um, one question that one may ask is whether this flip number definition is, is, is the correct definition for this kind of problems. 
we actually believe it is a relevant ones for, for various reasons. Um, and okay, so if, if this definition is the correct one, if the, the definition of flip number then uh, is the correct one, then um, then the, the, the question of of improving the dependency on the flip number is uh, sounds like an, a, an, an interesting uh, follow-up question. And it was actually no, it was actually shown by Hasidim Kaplan, Mansu, Matthias, and Stemmer in a work that will be shown in the upcoming NURIPS that um, the dependence in the flip number can be improved to a square root dependence instead of a linear one using tools from differential privacy. So this is the first time in this talk, I think that we see a connection between robustness and steering in a different area, differential privacy. In fact, this uh, it seems that uh, robustness is related to many notions in, in CS and to also to some, to some notions in, in mass as, as we shall see. So um, this is the first occurrence of, of such a connection. And yeah, so, and, so in, um, the results that are presented till now are for streams where only insertions of elements are allowed, but in many interesting problems, one is also interested in the case where you can also delete elements. And there it uh, seems that the flip number is, is a problematic measure because it can be unbounded when, when you allow deletions in your stream. Okay, so, so, so the, there are some further questions that we need to understand here. Um, the results that we, we have until now are, are quite preliminary still. And this is actually the case for, for many problems in, in the universal setting. We only have few results, uh, few answers. We have many more questions than answers. So this is one example of this phenomenon. Okay, so are, are there any questions until now? So I, I, did, I did go a bit quickly uh, over these results. Um, in, in the next part, I'll talk about uh, another problem in a bit more depth. But uh, anyway, my, my goal is just to just to give you a glimpse on how results in, uh, in this adversarial setting look like. Um, we, don't, yeah, we don't yet seem to have any general theory of uh, how, how to get results in the adversarial model. So these are just the first preliminary steps in understanding the model. And again, there are many uh, questions uh, that could be interesting. Okay, so in, in the next part, I would like to talk about um, the robustness of a single uh, interesting algorithm in, 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 streaming, in streaming, the algorithm that just does random sampling. So we want to understand what, what, to what extent random sampling is robust in a, in a streaming setting. So this is based on, the, on a couple of joint works with uh, Ilon Yogev and with uh, Noga Alon, Yuval Dagan, Shai Moan, Moninor, and Ilon. Okay, so let us consider the following uh, simple problems. How many uniform samples uh, from some data are needed so that the samples will be representative of the data? So let's say the data consists of real numbers and let's say these are the, the purple elements are the samples. Um, okay, and again, and now we, we need to, under, to, to understand what we mean by representative. So in this case, we will uh, use the following definition. We will say that uh, a sample is representative of the whole data if when you order the elements from smallest to largest, the median of the sample will be close in terms of ordering to, to the median of the data. So for example, in this case, we say that the sample does uh, represent the data pretty well. Okay, so now to answer this question of how many samples, how many uniform samples are required for the sample to be representative of the data that we see here. In this particular case, the answer only depends on the proximity parameter, how uh, how close uh, do we require the, the medians to be? 
this is epsilon, and the success probability. So if we want success probability one minus delta, then a number of samples that is constant does not depend on does not depend on the, on the stream length. It, does, it depends only on delta and on epsilon. Uh, suffices for the sample to be representative of the data. And the proof is actually very simple. So we apply a churn of bound twice. Once to show that not too many samples fall much below the median of the stream. And another time to show that not too many elements fall much higher than the median of the stream. Okay, so this question, uh, we, we, until now we considered uh, the, this problem without any notion of a uh, stream. But one can also ask the same question uh, when the elements arrive in a stream. And the question is whether we can apply the same analysis also if, if the elements arrive in a stream, because sampling is, is a very useful tool in streaming uh, because uh, for many relevant problems, you can just, uh, if the sample is representative of the stream, um, you can just uh, approximate the function over the sample instead of over the stream and, and get some gains in the space complexity. So we would really like to the sample to be uh, as, uh, we, we would really like to get as good bounds on the sample complexity uh, as possible. And okay, and, uh, on the first glance, it, it, it seems that just the same bound on, on the number of samples needed will suffice for the sample to be representative of the stream. Because you can just wait for all elements in the stream to arrive. You can sort them and then apply the same analysis that uses churn of bound. And this kind of proof will work if the stream was fixed in advance. It requires some uh, independence between different events that uh, holds if the stream uh, was chosen in advance. But in the adversarial model, we cannot assume this kind of independence. So we cannot apply Chernoff. Um, and OK, so, uh, so one, one now may ask whether is it still the case that the, the same uh, sample complexity will, will suffice uh, under the adversarial model? Uh, whether it's only just a, a matter of proof or, or really there is some separation between the static case and the adversarial model in, in, in this case. Wait, so you only want the algorithm to be correct at the end of the stream? Uh, so right now, the yes, for, for the discussion now, the, the answer is positive. Uh, in general, it doesn't matter much. I mean, typically, um, yeah, so, okay, so, uh, for the discussion now, yes. Um, usually, if uh, if you have an algorithm that works well in the end of the stream, then you can get an algorithm that works well at any point during the stream with a log n overhead because you can just take a union bound over um, over. Uh, you can just because because the error parameter is typically okay because of the dependency in delta in the in the the error parameter is, is typically logarithmic. Um, th there's usually not that much of a difference. Okay, and um, so yeah, so so uh, we we ask whether uh, the fact that the proof doesn't work in the adversarial model is just an artifact of of the proof, or whether there is a real separation between the static and the adversarial model. Now, before you continue, let me uh, let me show you the, the adversarial model for uh, sampling. So at any given round, the adversary sends an element to the sampler. Uh, this element comes from some universe of possible elements. And then uh, the sampler immediately tells the, the adversary whether the element was sampled or not. OK, so this goes on in rounds. Again, the adversary sends an element might depend on whether the, the previous element was sampled or not. Then it gets the answer whether it was sampled or not, and so on. So this is the adversarial model. And the bad news are that there is some separation. So here is, so we've seen that uh, for, the, for, the, for the problem that we've just seen of uh, sampling among real numbers where we want to approximate the median, 
we've seen that the constant sample uh, size suffices. And this was true in the static setting. In the adversarial model, let's see an attack that shows that uh, this is uh, the, the statement that the, sample, that the constant sample complexity suffices is far from correct. So um, let's see the following attack. Uh, the adversary at any given time maintains some interval in which it works. Initially, the interval is between 0 and 1. And the adversary submits an element that is in the middle of the current interval. Now, if the, if the element that was submitted is sampled by, by, uh, by a sampler, then the next interval that um, the adversary will take will be the left half of the current interval. So let's say, so, so in this case, let's say that the element was sampled, we go to the left half, and again, uh, we submit the middle of the interval. Now, if the element was not sampled, then we go to the right half of the current interval. So in this case, let's say that the element was not sampled. So we go to the right, and this is the next element submitted. Let's say it was again not sampled. We go to the right. Let's say this one was sampled, and so on. What we see here is that the sample is, in, in some way, uh, the most unrepresentative possible. Not only that uh, in terms of ordering the median of the sample is, is uh, far from the median of the stream, but all elements from the sample are bigger than all elements outside the sample. So uh, the sample is very unrepresentative of the stream. And th this looks like terrible news to us. Um, right, just, uh, yeah. you, you have just a few minutes left, so uh, yeah, yeah. count on that. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't have many, uh, I only have a few slides left. Um, the good news, however, are that, um, so are that uh, this type of attack requires an unrealistic bit complexity. So um, um, if uh, we think about a finite universe U, um, then the sample size that the, uh, the, the lower bound of the sample size that we get from this attack is roughly logarithmic in U uh, over uh, log n time, where, where the stream length is uh, n. And the good news are that no substantially better attack exists. So we have an upper bound, uh, this is with Elon, uh, on the sample size in the adversarial model, uh, where we have the same dependence as in the static model on uh, epsilon and delta. We have uh, this epsilon squared and log one over delta terms from, the, from before. And the only additional term is a logarithmic term in the universe size. But still, one, can, one may ask whether we can close the gap. So uh, from the lower bound side, we have this uh, log u over log n. And from the, upper, from the upper bound side, we have log u. So one may ask, what is the correct combinatorial parameter for this kind of problem? It's, it's not clear that log u is, uh, is the correct one. Um, now, more generally, the results actually apply to uh, set systems and, uh, and the epsilon approximation in, in this notion. Um, so it's a, a set system is, uh, I guess, most of you know the definitions, but the set system is just a, a couple of a universe and a collection of subsets from the universe. And epsilon approximation uh, of the data by the sample means that for any set in the set system, the density uh, of the set in the sample is close enough to the, to the density of uh, the set in, uh, in the whole stream. And it's not hard to say that uh, our results regarding medians um, in, uh, uh, among real numbers can be, can be uh, written in this, uh, in this language. And in fact, many, many problems in, in computational geometry, even in high dimensions, can be naturally written in this language. Um, and the good news are, the more general good news are actually for any set system. Uh, so, uh, and we, we see another parameter here, the visible dimension of the set system, perhaps uh, unsurprisingly in this workshop. 
Um, so for any set system with VC dimension D, a sample size of same as before, but uh, we get a D times uh, log of the universe size uh, term suffices for the sample to be an epsilon approximation of the stream in the adversarial model. And this compares to the uh, static case in, in, in that um, in that the, uh, the study case, we only have the VC dimension. We don't have this log u. So again, one may ask, what is what is the correct answer? And okay, and, and the correct answer will be um, okay. So it, it will be little stone dimension, um, perhaps unsurprisingly. So so we know that um, that VC dimension uh, captures mistake bounds in, in pack learning and little stone dimension is the analog for online learning it captures mistake bounds in online learning and another hint that little stone might be co the correct answer here is that the lower bound that i just described is actually a known lower bound for uh, online learning of thresholds and so in fact our results uh, the the Correct combinatorial parameters for our results is little stone. Um, so let me, let me just give a very brief uh, definition of little stone. I will not go into much detail and just state the, state the results. So um, uh, before that, let's maybe give the give a definition of a VC dimension that is easy to adapt to little stone later on. Omer, so, just just a small comment. We have like four minutes to the next talk. Okay. So. Uh, uh, okay. Maybe you want to be very brief. <laughs> okay, good. So um, yeah, so I, I will not. Okay, so I'll not uh, provide the full formal definition of little stone dimension. I just say that. Um, uh, yeah, I'll just say that it is an analog of. Okay, so so the VC dimension could be defined using a, a mistake trees, and um, yeah, and, and 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 the little stone dimension is is the same except that. Um, uh, we have some more freedom in terms of the labels that we choose in the mistake trees. And now the results that we have are that indeed the little stone dimension is the correct parameter. Um, I just have a disclaimer that this is still a work in progress. We're still writing the results. So uh, we're not 100% confident that all of them are correct. But it turns out that the uh, correct, uh, the, the, the correct uh, combinatorial parameter for uh, uh, the number of samples that we need in order to approximate uh, uh, in the adversarial model is the little stone dimension. We also have some results for epsilon nets, and we also have some lower bounds that apply for any set system. Um, okay, so let me conclude here. Um, I would just like to mention that again, that this is uh, a new direction with many open questions, few answers many interesting connections to other areas. So um, you are very much encouraged to, uh, uh, to dig uh, more. And uh, um, yeah, thank you very much. Omri, for the, for the very interesting talk. Uh, I think uh, I suggest to postpone the questions, may, uh, or maybe if someone has one very quick question, but otherwise I suggest uh, postponing it to uh, this kind of open problems less discussion part of uh, uh, of the uh, workshop. Yeah, have you considered uh, reservoir sampling? Sorry? Have you considered reservoir sampling? It's a different sampling algorithm. A reservoir sampling. Yeah, so the results work for both, uh, for all, all standard uniform algorithms. <laughs>